and welcome to a winning edition of Inside the Borough, the FEU podcast for and by fans. My name is Dan. I am joined by just Shane tonight. Unfortunately, Jack couldn't be with us. Uh, but Shane and I tonight are going to break down the uh, Shula Bowl victory, really domination uh, once again of this Florida Atlantic team over Florida International, final score of 37-7. to seven. Game was was never really co- close. FAU really looked uh, looked the part, looked the better team. So, um, uh, you know, kind of um, not not too much really to, to go over. It uh, was a solid game um, all the way around. Defense played really well. Uh, there was the one the one play where FAU scored on a really long run. Uh, offense was, you know, did the job. Of, you know, nothing really blew you away, but um, we kind of had some consistency. Well, I shouldn't say nothing blew you away. Malcolm Davidson had some – um, had some awesome runs, and we'll, we'll talk about that. But, um, yeah, final score, 37-7. to um, Again, this this win, like we've been saying, enabled FAU to continue to play meaningful games, and we, we, um, we've got a meaningful game to watch, and we'll talk about that later. But, Shane, what was your, what was your thought about this year's Shula Bowl? I, almost kind of, you know, in a, in a way, I don't want to say, like, downplay it, but just, oh, hum, like, FAU do it out and did exactly what they thought, that – just consistent with they've been all year. Um, the defense, again, uh, I'm a little disappointed. We could have had the first shutout in Shula Bowl history. Just one long run they gave up, just kind of a fluke play. You know, Chuck Robbie Ford guy took a bad angle. Um, but if you take away that one run, FIU had 32 yards rushing, 37 yards rushing, Lane said after the game, and that's that's unbelievable. I know they're banged up on the old line and stuff, but just uh, – and what's also even more amazing is FAU's defense in the second half. In Conference USA play, we've only given up two touchdowns in the second half of football games this year. I mean, that's that's yeah. that's unreal. I mean, that's making adjustments. That's that's unheard of stuff in 2019 in the spread offenses and scoring. Uh, and typically, offenses get better throughout a game as legs get tired. Uh, but, you know, our ability to rotate on the D-line this year, even linebackers have grown deeper. You know, Leroy doesn't have to play everything with uh, Caleb Bryce and Jose Barnwell kind of being able to mix in, have really just added and rotate the safety. You know, uh, shout out to, to Jordan Helm, who's kind of been like another yeah. element back there. You know, it, it, FAU just seems to just find safety. I mean, we play a lot of them, but we – so it just seems like we have more legs at the end of these games, um, the emergence of Nico Dotson, who just, you know, interceptions are kind of a funny thing. Uh, you know, James Pierre, I don't think has five career interceptions here. And, you know, they, they always just seem to come his way, um, you know, thrown away from James Pierre, but, you know, he makes the play on the field goal, which I thought, even though, you know, FIU even when they scored, it got it to 10-7 and it was only 13-7 at half. Did it, it never even felt close. Like you could just right. tell that it, it, the teams were just so different. Uh, and it was fun to watch. I mean, it lost a little bit of life for the game. I, it's got only if that cold front pushed through four hours earlier. I mean, yeah. the game itself was beautiful. I remember looking up in the third quarter and seeing a moon and not a cloud in the sky. And the and like I wore a windbreaker for an FAU game the whole time because it was like beautiful weather outside it. If it just pushed through a few hours earlier, probably could have helped attendance a few more thousand. But, you know, I think FAU, and we'll talk about a little bit, dominated the whole week. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, it, it, you and I talked about this. I mean, it just seems like where the two programs are and the directions they're going on and off the field, you know, I know our attendance isn't perfect, and they probably would like to have another – five to six, 7,000 in there the other night, but what our marketing department does and all the stuff and pushing the Shula Bowl compared to what that school down South does is it's day and night. Well, one school works way harder than the other. Yeah. It, it, it's kind of interesting. And a lot of people pointed this out on Twitter um, uh, that basically uh, I think it was uh, Gonswaga. I guess that's how you, how you say his name. Shout out to, to Sway on Twitter. Um, who pointed out that, um, you know, he, he posted a tweet that had like all of what FAU was doing and marketing and blah, blah, blah. And then it had another thing that said FIU uh, marketing for the game. And it was just like, get your Shula Bowl tickets. FIU plays this Saturday, essentially, you know. 
Um, yeah, I mean, the mar- marketing team really killed it. And, and, and I almost feel, I feel a little bit bad for them because they, they did a, a tremendous job this week. And the, the turnout, you would hope that the turnout would have been better. Alumni was super engaged. I know there was, they had this alumni um, kind of co- competition going on between who could get the most donors and stuff like that for this week. So, I mean, it, it's, it's a rivalry, rivalry week, but it's, it's, a, it's a little bit bigger. You know, it encompasses more of the entire, um, each institution. And you can see that, that FAU really, really wanted this to mean more than what FIU wanted it to mean. Uh, and I think that last kind of rainstorm right before kickoff, that last kind of one, and I, it just getting into weather geekiness, pulled up the radar, and of course, Tim Guafi, it's like one little stupid shower just mm-hmm. over Boca. Most of the rain clued through. I think that kind of like, I remember where I tailgate a lot of the students walk back through and just seeing them all sprint towards the dorms and that last kind of deluge. And it was a little disappointing. I mean, um, you know, whatever for that. But, you know, again, FAU dominates this series, uh, you know, in what felt like an oh-hum day for Chris. When you look at the stat sheet, I said, it didn't feel like he threw for nearly 300 yards, and he did. Um, D'Angelo Antoine, I guess him having 150 total yards is just the norm now. Um, I mean, it's, it's, that's Phenomenal and, and amazing because we were wondering where that was, where that spark in offense was going to come from. And, and, and you know, it's funny. You watch USF's uh, offense on Thursday night, and you got to think a team struggling like that on offense let that kid walk because he, he right safety for them. I mean, you know, that's that's coaching right there. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Coach DJ McCarthy, who's really gotten a lot of the receivers this year. Uh, you know, it's, and, and again, um, you know, we talked about it, and I really kind of want to see where these next couple weeks go. Um, Lane said after the game that he felt that Malcolm Davidson was still only 80%. You know, there was one carry where someone caught him from behind, and Lane's like, that wouldn't happen normally. Yeah. Which is funny, it was actually kind of, I sat next to Malcolm Davidson's younger cousin, came and sat by us, and he was telling me, you know, and I asked him about the running style, and he's like, yeah, man, he runs like a track star. And, uh, again, I said this in my show a few weeks ago when he had his first breakout game. Malcolm Davidson was a highly recruited kid. You know, I think we kind of forget that, and Larry McCammon gets a lot of the, you know, being the freshman of Hoover, but Malcolm Davidson has all the potential to <clears> – if he stays here a full four years, I mean, yeah. maybe not touchdowns, and I think – um, we can talk a little bit about running back depth going in the future. You might not see a ton as exclusively as many carries just because you have so many good players, but he could get up there and, you know, when it's all said and done, be in the top three in a lot of rushing records for FAU. I mean, the kid has that type of talent. He was recruited. He had a ton of offers coming out of school. Uh, yeah. So it's, he, he finished up with uh, 17 carries for 144 yards. Um, that's, you know, just a, a just a phenomenal day, and uh, I think he he is starting, uh, and it's so hard. And we, we have to we have to stop doing this uh, on the show as well. But it's it's so hard not to, you know, think of like oh what that what that run would have looked like had Kareth White hit the hole or what motor would do in that situation. Um, but like now, especially Malcolm Davidson, this game was I oh, think the, a breakout game for him. The, two of the touchdowns he should have been tackled in the backfield. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So he is starting to like get those signature runs of like, okay, that's, that's who we have at running back. Like, you know, motor had those most, one of the most memorable against middle Tennessee, but like, we always look back and we're like that, that was an awesome thing. And like um, his, his, his touchdowns, um, especially the last one was just like, it was just phenomenal and, and um, tremendously entertaining to watch. So I mean, ten yard one. Someone should have had him in the backfield. That should have been a two yard loss. I mean, you gotta you look at his build. He's a little, he's thicker, you know, and he yeah. has that straightforward track speed. So again, hopefully, maybe after a bye week and the UTSA. I mean, what does our offense involve into? And we're really gonna need them, especially you know it's looking like now, if we have like McCammon. Davidson and possibly somewhat BJ Evans healthy all at once. I mean, it's, and then we've seen the emergence of Chauncey Mason. I mean, mm. he had, 
He had two catches for just under 40 yards and adds another 60 yards on the ground. James Charles added some more yards. I mean, uh, and, and again, someone I think uh, pointed out, uh, Jake Elvin pointed this out, it's just the O-line play has increasingly gotten better. I know there was a lot of shuffling, but I think they finally have gotten, um, you know, we didn't do this last week, but, I know there's a lot of talk on the board, but shout out to Junior Diaz in the Western Kentucky game. He had he was uh, Pro Football Focus rated him the number one center in the country. His game, he's the highest rated center in the country in that week of the yeah. Western Kentucky, and he had another great game yesterday. I, I think you, you, as a fan, <clears throat> what's great to see is like these are all things that we've noticed and we've talked about a lot in the beginning of the year. And it's so great to, to see that we have a coaching staff that is, like, competent in putting the right people in the right situations to succeed. Like, that's as, – as, even, if, even if we weren't winning all of the games, which we are, it's nice to say, like, the O-line is not a glaring problem. Um, so it's nice that, that, you know, you can really appreciate that. And, and obviously, yeah, we, we've won, what, six out of the last – what, seven out of the last – Seven of eight. Yeah. Um, you know, so we we're kind of on that very, very similar project, uh, trajectory that we were back in 2017. Um, but, you know, it, it's nice to see that. And, and like you said, our offense, you know, we, we, could be, we could be peaking on offense, certainly at, at the right time when we need to, uh, potentially with Southern Miss coming, coming to town with um, Davidson, McCammon, and potentially B.J. Emmons in the backfield. I mean, like, that things are, are, are certainly looking good for now. Yeah, I mean, FIU secondary is really good. So definitely that downfield passing game was a, was a little bit of struggle um, against them to get guys open downfield. But, you know, they managed. Uh, get Harrison Bryan the ball. John Rain had a couple catches. So, you know, it's just beautiful kind of to see them win in different ways. And we've talked about this before. Yeah, and outside, outside of D'Angelo and Antoine, there, it seems as if it's a different – it's either a different group or a different person um, who is who is making the bigger plays. Um, you know, like Western Kentucky, Tronti was had a, had a major part in the offense. Um, this week, it was Malcolm Davidson. Uh, you know, previous games, um, Harrison Bryant and some some other receivers. It's kind of it's kind of a mixed thing. You you kind of never know who's who's going to have that big game. Who's going to make those big catches or, or big runs that are are going to turn the tide. And it's, I think you could always mark. Harrison Bryant down for six catches somewhere between yeah. 75 and 100 yards and if you know I mean, like he, he yeah. seems golden for that every week um yeah, he, that's he, true he's the one where it's like but yes in your point right every week it's different so you know I it, Lane doesn't let injuries back but man I'm just kind of sitting here thinking after a bye and maybe rest another at UTSA I mean Southern Miss you're gonna need all hands on deck yeah and then, you know we can yeah kind of transition into this now um dan you give the update i mean conference usa is huge this week yeah um so actually we'll 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 talk a little bit about um you know the, this past week and certainly there was um some notable games western kentucky uh throttled arkansas which you know anytime a conference usa team can be the cusa team even a team as as uh, woeful as Arkansas, it, it's great for the conference. Um, and, you know, think about FAU pretty easily handled Western Kentucky and Western Kentucky put 45 up on Arkansas. Uh, so that was pretty good to see. Uh, UTSA, FAU's next uh, opponent um, after the bye beat a lowly Old Dominion by one, uh, 24 to 13, and actually had to come back in the fourth quarter uh, to win that game. Uh, Charlotte, who is now five and five, three and three in CUSA, beat UT, uh, UTEP twenty-eight to one. Southern Miss throttled uh, UAB. UAB without their starting quarterback, um, but uh, throttled them thirty-seven to two. And then Louisiana Tech uh, throttled North Texas fifty-two to seventeen. So um, you know, there's I think there's some some interesting things that that happened. Certainly, Western Kentucky beating. Um, Arkansas and then you know Charlotte getting up to five and five who very likely could go bowling which is um, which is pretty interesting to me so um, yeah so we, we can talk a little bit about now 
the game that every every FAU fan should be watching this weekend, uh, Louisiana Tech versus Marshall. Um, Friday night, so we get like a prime time spot. I'm yeah, thinking if I sure. high school football game or watch that game this weekend. I Louisiana Tech is rolling right now. I mean, they're putting yeah. points up on everybody. We've talked about them before. Jameer Smith is a senior starter. You know, they're they're well coached. They got they recruit about on our level. Um, so they're, they're about just as talented as we are. And it's, they're receiving AP top 25 votes. I think if they go get a win, the next few couple more wins, I don't know if they have about two or three more games, but uh, I think maybe if, you know, they kind of went out by the end of the year, we just be interesting if they went out, I think by the time the conference USA championship and a handful of teams lose in front of them, you're probably looking at a fringe probably top 25 team, um, which would be yeah. mega cool if we get a chance. Um, but, you know, they're going across. They're going to play Friday night against Marshall in, a, like, a short week. And um, they're, they're only four-point favorites on the road. Uh, they, the S&P uh, indicator says they have a 52% chance of winning this game, which I think is a pretty big deal for on the road. But – you know, we'll see. But I don't want to get too far ahead. Yes, if they win. But um, FE's last two games are interesting. Um, UTSA is struggling. But anytime you have to go all the way out to Texas, mm -hmm. you know, kind of play in that environment, it's, it's risky. And then Southern Miss is a ball club. Yeah. You know, they have a great quarterback and they have a great front seven. So that's posed problems for us. Um, so again, I think you know, let's get our, you know, we can get our hopes up and if Louisiana Tech beats Marshall, we control our destiny, but God, we got to control our destiny because our last two games are not particularly easy. Yeah. Yeah. So um, basically it, it's, it's as simple as Louisiana Tech beating Marshall and FAU. Well, simple, we'll say simple. Uh, in quotation marks, um, if if Louisiana Tech beats Marshall, FAU beats UTSA and and um, Southern Miss, which all orders both of them, uh, then FAU would represent CSA East in the conference. Jake also tweeted. To credit to Jake Owen tweeting this out today. If and actually the best case scenario for FAU, Marshall loses this week to Louisiana Tech. And then Marshall has to rebound quickly and go to Charlotte. Charlotte's shown they could beat anybody. Yeah, yeah. So if Marshall loses to Charlotte quickly, we beat UTSA. That Southern Miss game could be, you know, uh, it, 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 might, it might not mean as much in a best-case scenario. Um, right. So, you know, we'll see. But, you know, it, it'd be fun, uh, you know, if Louisiana Tech wins out, we'd have to go to – Rust in, so it should be a lot different than our last conference USA championship game. And go win on the road against a top 25 team would be a tall order, but yeah, fun just to be in that game again. Consider everything that happened last year, and you know, kind of going back to the Shula Bowl again. I mean, you look at the direction of these two programs. Uh, you know, just to talk about Kadarius Gaskin, if you guys remember the uh, receiver at Delray American Heritage. I mean, I mean. Excuse me, not Delray American Heritage. Atlantic. Delray right. Atlantic um, announced he was transferring from FIU today. And all like a couple years on signing day, you know, a lot of FIU fans were upset we didn't get him. And we had a got a kid out of that school recently. You know, FIU kind of came in our backyard and took a kid. And it's just, you're, you're starting to see some cracks with that program. Um, I know Jack would love to pour it on them, but. You know, it's, 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 it's rough for them right now. Um, and, you know, I, I wish they would have played it up more this week. What, what, one thing that's interesting is, um, you know, you, again, talking about the direction of the programs, uh, Lane and Butch were um, obviously two, you know, two really notable hires. They're each making, I think, I think Lane makes like 50,000 more a year. I can't remember which one it is. They're both making like 900 something thousand a year, probably a little more than that. And, um, you know, you got to think if you're FIU administration, you didn't hire Butch Davis to have, you know, six to 7,000 people in the stands and go, 
six and seven uh, or, you know, seven and six or six and six or seven and six, seven and five throughout the year with no conference championships. Um, you know, FAU hired Lane to win conference championships and we're, we're certainly on that path right now. But, you know, you got to think if you're FIU, like, all right, at, at what point are we, are we going to start seeing return on our investment here? We're, we're putting nearly a million a year and you're coming back with, um, you know, five to seven wins um, and a bowl game victory that not really what anybody's asking for. I, it's, but though I'm going to just say this, it just trip talking to, uh, you know, Eric Henry, who we had last week on put words in it. Just, you know, he was comp to tell me this was his first time at FAU Stadium and just how much better our stadium is. And he said he walked past the, the new athletic facility, which was start, you know, it was crazy day. We saw the pictures this week of mm-hmm. them putting goalposts behind it. I mean, FAU's football program is going to have everything here soon. I mean, that's, that, that facility is going to be one of the best in G5, one of the best in the state, um, just top to bottom. Yeah, could be a, a total game changer that, again, kind of further separates further separates the, um, the two programs. So, again, it, and it, we, we talk about this so much, but it, it, it's a bummer that that's the way it is. You know, it would have been great to have a 34-31, you know, game that came, you know, that was, that was really exciting. But, you know, it, it is what it is. And, um, you know, we, now we kind of move forward and, um, you know, um, move into the bye this week. I know there's, um, there's a, lot of, a lot of recruits um, at this game. I don't know if you've got any updates on recruiting um, from, I know this was a big recruiting weekend for FAU. Yeah, FAU, I put out a list of kind of the notable guys. I mean, uh, you know, I try as many as I can. Uh, when it's unofficial, kids just kind of sign up and it's who can find rides and you to put out. I mean, FAU probably had a good 30, 40 kids there. Um, but, you know, there's kind of the, the important ones, which, you know, that you never knew who can might emerge. This is a big recruiting week. FAU, I think, is going to be kind of smart with this. They're going to use, they're going to have a lot of kids uh, take, maybe not like a, as big as we see in December, but there's going to be kids taking official visits during the buy, which is different. Most schools send their coaches out on the road, which we'll send ours during the week. Uh, but there's, you know, we're in the second round of high school playoffs and coaches can only visit schools uh, once per season. So they're kind of really limited. You know, they all went out and hit a bunch of schools during the first buy. So they're limited. So FAU is going to take and give themselves an extra week of full officials. Um, I think that's really smart. Um, you, you know, you, you want to get kids on campus as quickly as possible. You, sometimes you want to be kind of the last school uh, to go, but I, I think this just gives them a chance to kind of just get more targets. Um, you know, hopefully by the end of this week, uh, you know, I'll have a, a good list and I already have a, talked to a couple of players who are definitely be on campus this weekend taking officials and it's a couple of really nice names. So yeah, it's like looking like we can uh, pick up a few commitments, um, you know, possibly this weekend. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. And, you know, I think you could roll into the early signing period with maybe half to at best case scenario, two thirds of its class uh, full, you know, it's, 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 it's really starting to come together and uh, you know, we keep pi- like piling talent like we are, it won't be as big as last year's class, but um, you know, it's, 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 it's going to be really good. And it's really only going to kind of build off what happened last year. Yeah. So we'll be, um, that's uh we'll keep an eye out for that. And definitely, you know, if you're not following Shane on Twitter, uh, make sure you do. And also everything will be, uh, coming out from the FAU Owls Nest. Um, so yeah, I think that will about wrap up uh, tonight. FAU Shula Bowl champs once again, 30, 37 to seven. Uh, really only game that matters next weekend uh, on Friday night, like Shane said earlier. Uh, Louisiana Tech versus Marshall. We are all Tech fans uh, this week. I don't know what they say. Uh, Roll Tech or... Uh, I, I don't know, rec, rec Tech, that's, that's, that's Georgia Tech, I don't know. Whatever, Louisiana Tech fans, uh, if you're listening to this, uh, tell, us, tell us how to root for you guys, to say. But, um, yeah, as always, make sure you check us out on Twitter, at Inside the Borough. Check out the forum and the podcast over at in, uh, 
sorry, uh, FAWellnessNest.com, and iTunes, Spotify, all that. You're crazy business there. So um, we thank you all for being with us, and uh, we'll, we're going to enjoy this Chula Bowl victory as we get ready for the bye week next week. So thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next time. Go out.